What's up guys, Connor here, and welcome back to Star Wars Central. Okay, so I'm assuming you've read the title, but in case you didn't, these are my first impressions of the sequel era content in Battlefront 2. Now, some of what I have to say in today's video will be good and bad. But overall, I think the sequel era content and the new map Takadana are great additions to the game. And from what I can tell this early on in the beta, you guys seem to agree. Anyway, let's begin with my first impressions of the new map Takadana. This map is incredible. The attention to detail and the variation in the different areas you can play in are fantastic. You've got this large industrial area with a pipe and a lot of machinery, then you've got Mascanata's castle, which in itself is just absolutely astounding in terms of the amount of detail and easter eggs, and then at the side of the map there's a fire spray gunship, basically the same class of ship that Slave 1 is, and lots of other cool features and details that make this a really fun map to play. The castle on its own, not counting any of the other areas, is more than enough for a single map. But we also get a large forest area to play in as well. The cover is well placed and the flanking routes are simple and obvious for new players. There is definitely a lot of thought that's gone into the design of this map to make sure that each class has a purpose. Some of the areas inside Maz Kanata's castle are perfect examples of this. So firstly, the rooftop is incredibly useful for the specialist class. It has some of the longest sightlines in the map, all of which are focused on stopping the First Order from entering the castle and stopping them from leaving. And on top of this, some of the flanking routes are really helpful with the Assault class and the Scattergun. Now moving on, there are one or two things about the map that I didn't like, so firstly, the lower area of Maz Kanata's castle is not really that useful. My guess is in other modes, this area will be used more, but in Strike, where it's only 8v8, there really isn't much point in going down the stairs. They could change this if they moved the objective, the artifact, into the basement. But I do understand why they didn't do that, because that's far too small a choke point to focus players on. So in terms of balancing the game, keeping the objective upstairs was the right decision. As for the rooftop portion, the sightlines could be improved a little bit with the removal of one or two tree branches, but again, that could lead to some balancing issues as well. All it takes is one good specialist and the A2 ATCFE, and it's going to be a really bad day for the First Order troopers. So I understand why the sightlines are pretty terrible at certain angles. I guess one good thing about this is that it forces people on the rooftop to expose themselves more to shoot at the First Order troopers. Anyway, that's just some thoughts I had after playing Takadana. Next up, we've got the reinforcements. Now, these are not exclusive to Takadana, but I am going to talk about how they work on Takadana anyway, because that's what you guys are going to be playing in the beta. So the Resistance and First Order Jump Troopers are crazy powerful. They are not invincible, they don't have a high amount of health, but they do have very good mobility. And even the base weapon, the pistol for the First Order Jump Trooper, and the rifle for the Resistance Trooper are both very powerful. I actually thought that the rocket was a little bit underpowered. I can see the use against maybe an ATST or another vehicle, but when you're using it against infantry, there really isn't that much of an advantage. This is because the weapon doesn't seem to have a very large blast radius, so what little damage it does isn't really being applied over a large range. The only time I manage to get kills with it are with near or absolutely direct hits. Either way, it's still a great reinforcement, but in the beta you should just focus on using its mobility and its standard weapon more than anything else. And if you're only going to go for rocket kills, you're really wasting your time. The cooldown timer is way too high to use against infantry, and the time it takes to aim the rockets will probably get you killed. The jump trooper is so much more than this, and to really maximize your time with the reinforcements, you have to use the jump pack. Moving on, the flame trooper felt more than a little bit weak. He is still pretty powerful with his abilities, but the base weapon is pretty much unusable in its current form. The thing is, I was expecting something like the Flame Trooper in Battlefield 1. It may be that the map design in Battlefield 1 was a little more close quarters, meaning the flamethrower could really get in there and deal a lot of damage. But in Battlefront 2, it's nowhere near as easy to use. I think maybe that's a good thing in the long run, because not only will people get better with the Flame Trooper over time, but the First Order Flame Trooper is still very powerful. The abilities make him great for pushing or clearing rooms like in Maz Kanata's castle where you have to steal the artifact. That really is the only and the perfect moment for the Flame Trooper. So essentially, the Flame Trooper is very situational. If you are going to spend your hard-earned battle points on a Flame Trooper, then do it when you're fighting at the castle, 
because that's really the only stage where he's usable. Calling it in during the forest segment really is a waste of time and battle points. Anyway, those are just my first impressions of the new map and the First Order content. As always, your support is very appreciated, thank you guys so much for everything, I'll see you next time, and may the Force be with you.